Welcome, brothers and sisters, my name is Eros and I am the Doll Maker. In this episode we will talk about another great festivity on the Wheel of the Year. And in this case it will be Beltane. Now Beltane falls on the 1st of May, even if some traditions start to celebrate Beltane on the 30th of April. Of course, if you live on the Southern Hemisphere, you will celebrate Beltane on the 1st of November uh, and some traditions start to celebrate on the 31st of October night. Now, Beltane is one of the four uh, fire festivals on the Wheel of the Year, together with Imbolc, uh, Lamas, also called uh, Lunasa, and so win. So they are on uh, an X cross, not like solstices and equinoxes on the wheel. This festivity is all about regrowth, new growth, renewal, prosperity, abundance, fertility, and bonding. Now, as you can clearly see, some of the correspondences. Uh, we have already encountered in previous festivities and a few new ones. This is because uh, on the wheel or the wheel of nature changes gradually. Just like us, in our life traumatic events may happen, but transformation always happens gradually in time. For the image of this festivity, we got the May Queen, representing the Divine Feminine, in her aspect of the Mother, so a stable feminine energy. And this May Queen is in and fasting with the Green Man, so a masculine energy ascended. Masculine energy in his wise and fertile nature and aspects. Uh, in an analogy to us, we, to our development, we do no more have the feminine nurturing energy uh, directed to a weaker masculine. We, uh, the, the nurturing has already happened and now we got a stable, dominant masculine energy, glorious. Now, about end fasting. End fasting is the pagan marriage that we've seen celebrated between the May Queen and the Green Man. But uh, marriages as we intend them and end fasting are two completely different kind of contracts. They are both contracts, but marriage is a Saturnine contract glorified in the sun. The ring of marriage is a Saturnine symbol and gold is the metal that refers to the sun, so Saturn glorified in the sun. And fasting is a circular and cycling contract. In and fasting we see the sun and the moon entwined and we still have the ring but is the image of the ring of the solar eclipses. The name of the festivity has Gaelic origins uh, and it could mean bright fire or the brightness of fire. Please forgive my rusty ancient Gaelic. Um, this name indicates the elements of fire shining from and above the elements of earth and or uh, the force of nature finally shining bright, uh, emerging from the earth. In, in some tradition, this festivity is also called Walpurgisnacht. Uh, in more of a Germanic fashion. This 
Festivity is the perfect time to develop further our relationships, uh, for example, our contracts, our agreements, but especially in our romantic relationship, if you want. Consolidating and appreciating the results of our efforts and workings um, and protection of ourselves and the fruits of our work. If you want to celebrate in a very simple way, of course, as always, you can wear the colors of this festivity. We will see them in just a second. You can decorate your altar or you can mm, renew your seasonal altar. Um, you can wear flower decoration. Uh, you can decorate your home, especially with flowers, because they're prominent in these seasons. Or you can, uh, of course, all of these decorations uh, are made with the correspondences that we will see in a second. Or you can simply be in nature if you can do anything else while you're in nature you want to interiorize uh, the full rebirth uh, of nature through uh, struggle and hard work fully owning her success and you fully owning your success I do also recommend, on a side note, seasonal festivals, uh, may they be pagan festivals or simple uh, traditional fairs, uh, but with the intention to celebrate the rebirth of nature. Another thing you can do is celebrate with your partner. Take good notes that I said celebrate with your partner, not to celebrate your partner. This festivity is all about entwining and not mm, dominance. Finding balance. Uh, if, you can, if you do not have access to even fairs, concerts and clubs are perfectly fine. Just keep in mind to remember that you are celebrating the rebirth of nature. So get there with the right intentions. Now let's start with the correspondences. As always, we will start with colors. We find green and red, green for the feminine Venus, red for the masculine Mars. Or in um, a different point of view, you may say nature and fire. We also find silver, silver and gold, or white and yellow, representing the moon and the sun, in conjunction, of course, for these festivities. Sometimes we also find, uh, in a different scale, red and white. Uh, they may represent, in some tradition, menstrual blood and the mm, mm, semen, basically. So, the encounter between masculine and feminine fertility. Talking herbs, we find daisies, uh, starting from the shape, but also the color white and yellow representing the sun and the moon. Daffodils, uh, again, most often they're not yellow and representing the sun and their perfume. Um, connecting them to femininity, bluebells and other kinds of hyacinths, uh, marigold, prime rose, jasmine, lilac, especially in our tradition, majoram, meadow sweet, uh, coriander, cinnamon and vanilla that we will see again in just a second when we will talk about kitchen magic. Also we find woodwork, musk, oak moss and many breeds of roses. In, in some exotic tradition you may also find while researching patchouli and ilang ilang. Talking about trees correspondences, we find birch, we find rowan, hawthorn, uh, 
uh, elder and maple and my brother's skin personal favorite dragon's blood talking crystals if you are proficient with crystals you may want to work with emerald uh, to quartz to keys let me know uh, country for the correct pronunciation if you want to work with crystals on the more fiery side you find uh, carnelian uh, garnet red jasper uh, fire gates uh, or if you want to use a milder fire correspondence you may want to go more towards uh, rose quartz if you want a stronger uh, binding and protection crystal you may want to work with tourmaline especially black tourmaline just keep in mind to be careful while handling black tourmaline because it's mildly toxic so keep that in mind and now for my favorite part of these festivities we will get towards kitchen magic we've already seen coriander cinnamon and vanilla for to, to get on some spice going in this season you want to work with asparagus beets artichokes carrots cauliflowers and many other kinds of cabbages uh, you want to work with onions beans courgettes spinach salads and wild salads of any kind and milk honey and oats or other kind of uh, cereal flowers for my spices in this season I tend to get to stronger spicy spices like chili or curries and for my baking I mainly work my, my baking work mostly revolves around honey usage for my drinks I will go toward meat ginger ale or may wine may wine is white wine there are a lot of recipes the recipes on may wine so find your favorite one and work around it just keep in mind that the main ingredient for may wine is woodroof steeped on a white wine so try to always include woodroof for my hot drinks I will mainly go towards floral teas in this season. Now, a few traditional activities for this festivity are the preparing of May bushes, uh, which are, at least in my tradition, thorned uh, bushes adorned with flowers uh, and ribbons, usually. But of course, you may want to find a simple, it depends on your tradition, a simple floral bush and adorn that with ribbons. And why not? Even sigils or petitions, whatever you want to work with. On a different perspective, you may want to follow a more North European tradition, which is the preparation of maypoles. Maples are uh, exactly what you think. So wooden poles planted on the ground. Again, representing um, the, the hole in this case is usually prepared, but also representing the feminine gender uh, and the pole more of the masculine gender, either penetrating or sprouting from the earth. And again, these poles are usually adorned with flowers, uh, strings are hanged from them, and usually there are celebratory dances uh, symbolizing intercourses between the two genders. Uh, of course, please keep in mind, when I talk about gender, I am talking about the principle of gender, so the existence of gender and both genders in everything as hermetically expressed perfectly in the Kibalion. Uh, I am not talking about gender identity or sexual preferences, uh, not only because I'm liberal, 
but also because my job is to teach, not to judge, and I'm not particularly good at judging others. But getting back on track, for those who practice a little more, this is a fantastic occasion for the consecration and preparation of uh, magical waters. Uh, we will see more in future videos about the preparation of waters. Uh, also an amazing time because there are plenty of herbs and flowers to um, prepare and consecrate floral sachets or pillows. Pillows are prominent in our tradition. Uh, again, more in future videos. For your spell work, I will uh, suggest that you work on maintaining prosperity or towards long-term prosperity or to spells to reach stable prosperity. Uh, on a different note, you may want to work on developing your love life or finding love. Uh, you can work to stabilize uh, and make more fertile your finances. Uh, and why not? You can even work on beauty spells or sexually enhancing spells. For your meditation, if you practice focused meditation, um, I will work toward integrating um, in you feeling the strength of nature reborn within you. Um, visualizing our full potential realized, uh, ourselves where we will be when our potential will be completely fulfilled and realized. Uh, for this season, uh, we have the amazing option of meditating outside. Actually, for myself, I do prefer, I do prefer meditating outside in colder season because uh, the sharpness of the cold, uh, I think it gives me more lucidity. But this peaceful, temperate, uh, temperate environment uh, really favors especially mindful meditation outside. Now, if you want to get deeper on the rabbit hole, I'll wait for you on the next video. Uh, otherwise, I deeply thank you for your kind attention and may eternal light shine upon.